What is going on guys? Wiser here and I'm coming to you with One Hive Labs next base building episode. Yes, Kadik and I are back. We have decided to take the plunge and give a shot at some Town Hall 10 base building content. Um, so uh, obviously here with Kadik, the man himself. How you doing, man? Hey, man. It's uh, been a long time. Good to be back. Yeah, absolutely. Good to be back. Uh, good to start this Town Hall 10 process. I know for months people have been asking for this. So uh, let's give it to them. Let's hop on over to the sketch here. Um, you've built this little creation here now. I just recently started building Town Hall 10 bases. I mean, I I have a Town Hall 10 and Invicta. Um, and let me, let me just say, I started looking at it and... You know, some things are the same as Town Hall 9, but a lot is different, and I just, where do you start, right? And that, that's kind of kind of going to be the theme of this episode, is the introductory to base building. And and let me let me ask you, Kev, where do we start at Town Hall 10? So the first thing you want to look at when you're building a Town Hall 10 is asking yourself the question, am I going to be attacked by Town Hall 11 or a Town Hall 10? Yep. And... In general, a rule of thumb would be if you have uh, level 2 Infernos with equivalent point defenses or, or other defenses um, or lower, or you have level 3 Infernos or up, that's pretty much the break point for your difference. Um, yeah. The difference between uh, getting bullied by an 11 or getting tripled by a tunnel 10. So basically, lower weight 10s, you're going to be wanting to to learn, learn the Town Hall 10 defense and the higher weight 10s, you're going to be leaning towards more of a Town Hall 11 defense. That's basically what you're Yes, saying. exactly. Perfect. So uh, in this case, in the base that I have uh, here, this is a level 2 Inferno and lower. So this is where we're going to start as well because this is the most important thing in war at the moment. I mean, wars are decided at the Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10 level. So I thought this is the best place to start. And since you have a Town Hall 10, uh, and are attacking as a Tunnel 10, what are the things you're looking for when you're attacking the base? <laughs> um, well, f first, first and foremost, I guess, the Inferno Tower placements in relevance to the Archer Queen. Mm -hmm. um, can, can I grab that Archer Queen and an Inferno Tower via some method, I guess, uh, would be a first sort of exploit i'm looking for um yes exactly however just like town hall nine you have to be wary of the cc uh, especially if it's a first hit um you don't want to obviously queen walk somewhere forget about the clan castle mm -hmm. just send a bunch of valks in um that could be big trouble so you got to deal with those things primarily i would say uh, potentially other things i look for maybe would be can i get some air defense um you know, with a zap quake, um, if you're able to get on an entry, a kill squad entry to air defense and potentially an inferno tower, then a zap quake dragon makes it really, really, uh, really, really strong. So those are probably the main things I'm looking for. Definitely. So in order, you would say the infernos are the most important things, uh, followed by things like uh, the queen and the CC. And then uh, stuff like the air, air defenses defense. and uh, important point defenses, I would say. Yep. Or and, uh, stuff like that. Expos as well is another thing I yeah. look at. Obviously, are they up? Are they down? Where are they? Um, yeah. Level of, are they level three? Are they level four? That's another big difference too. A level four. It's a big difference. Yeah. Yes. So, so in ba in essence, there's about four to five uh, very viable strategies at Tunnel Ten versus Tunnel Ten at the moment, which is the mass bowlers. Uh, we're all familiar here with it. Uh, we've got the minor attack, and we got the Val uh, Valalo, as it's called, like the Valk's small kill squad with a Laloon on the back end. And we've got the dragons to worry about. So those are the f uh, the four main strategies we're looking at to to defend. Yep. So and as you said, um, we've got the Inferno Towers. So let's start there. I mean, they are the most important thing at Tunnel Ten level. So they need to be protected and well protected. And uh, when attacking an Inferno, what are the ways you're looking at killing them? Um, maybe an Arch Queen charge, depending on how many high hit point structures are going to be in the way. She obviously can't get 
held up too much. A big piece of it too is is what level Inferno Tower it is. Mm -hmm. um, I'd feel a lot more comfortable charging a level like in this base, for example, coming in from down here. I'd feel much more comfortable at being a level two than if it was a level three. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Just a general kill squad with giants. Um, can I clear a side of a funnel with a queen walk or healers and bowlers and then send in uh, potentially Valks uh, and a kill squad straight at, a, at an Inferno Tower? Um, yeah, so those are the main things indeed. So those are the things we need to defend. And in this base, you can see it as well. Um, both of the sweepers, for example, uh, you can see that in this case, uh, they're placed to defend the queen charge, yep. as well as the storages. I mean, those are the main things to defend the queen charge. They are the storages and sweepers and point defenses. So your expos, mostly. Mm -hmm. So when building a base, um, place your infernos first and think of a way of how to protect them. And as you can see, uh, the, you see this with most top clans at the moment. They have Inferno Towers in these weird square box, boxes. This is because a bowler um, cannot attack the Inferno over the wall from any angle like this. So this is the main key to defending the mass bowler stretch. And this is also the reason why you don't see them as much anymore. Because the Infernos are very well protected uh, from the bowlers from any angle. Actually, from from seeing that, uh, I learned something about bowlers. It's not that I'm pretty sure. Like, if there's a building right in front and it's attacking, the bounce will hit it still, right? However, yeah, that's, that's very possible. Yeah. However, it just if there's no buildings around it for it to attack, it will not stop and attack it. Like its sight is out of range. It's not the fact like its its attack is in range, but its sight is out of range. Yes, definitely. So when placing buildings around an inferno, you do need to keep in mind. Uh, that bowlers may bounce on top of the Inferno. Yes. Yeah, so do test that when attacking. That's one of the things about Tunnel 10 as well. Test your bases in fr friendly challenges. Like, it's one of the most important things. Uh, you will find things that um, need updating, basically. Absolutely. So that's another thing about the Queen Charges, because we're on the topic right now. Um, the air defenses need to be, like, just as Tunnel 9, but even more as Tunnel 9, need to be out of range of queens, of, uh, of an attacking queen. Like, the queen will be charging in here, and hopefully uh, the healers will get uh, sniped off by an air defense before she can actually reach the Inferno, or... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> as soon as the Inferno is down, you want the, the healers to be down as well, because if the queen dies around the Inferno Tower, uh, I think you have a good shot at defending. It's a small victory, so, at least, right? They're yeah, just... it's it's a good victory. I mean, those healers, they're nasty. It's need... hard. It's hard to defend necessarily a queen coming in sometimes with the ability yeah, and a rage and stuff. But at least if she dies af right after, then it's some defense. Yeah, it's victory. still a good thing. I yeah. mean, he's losing a lot of healers. He, he doesn't get any extra value of, out of the queen. So that's actually really good. So when building your Inferno chambers, I would say almost... Um, Place them first, make sure every single side of them has two walls in between, I mean two spaces in between, I should say, sorry, not walls, um, like this, and um, make sure it's protected by storages, and the Expos are helping together with other point defenses uh, to defend the Inferno Tower from Queen Charges. So those are the basic rules for Inferno Towers. So let's move on to um, the next step. I would say uh, the most common strat for, um, yeah, that was used in the past against our tens is the bowler attack. Um, what you can see here, what I've done is I've put giant bombs in front of the Inferno Towers. Um, this is to stop the bowlers because uh, a double set of bombs triggering at the same time, while well, they're not full HP, has a good shot at taking out bowlers at once, like in one go. I mean, you might may have seen this. I mean, uh, I mean, you've attacked as a talent, and you've seen your bowlers evaporate. I've just seen it that last war happened to me. I just had it last war too, actually. Yeah, 
where my uh, nice. where it was only one giant bomb. My bullets were half HP. I didn't want to waste the freeze on that inferno, but <laughs> I had to uh, in hindsight because my bullets decided to ignore the inferno tower, but still get clipped by. A giant ball. <laughs> That's so funny you say that. Literally last war, because I have my 10 in swarm right now, and I did a war with them, and I'm pretty sure I lost a record amount of bowlers to a triple bomb in the core. <laughs> I did the was, same thing in the same ugly. war, but with a single bomb. Mm -hmm. So, as you can tell, giant bombs are the key uh, combined with Inferno Towers to stop bowlers. So keep that in mind. I mean, um, place your giant bombs well. Um, and this is one of the things you need to test. I mean, uh, when doing friendly challenges, where do they come in from? Um, if they use bolus, that is. Now, and so where do you need you to this, place bolus? Was there any specific reason you put them on this side, or was it just for example's sake? Like, what would would there be a benefit to having them behind? Well, first of all, um, imagine you're entering a base with bolus. What angles would you take? Yeah. Probably straight at one of these. <laughs> straight into the yeah. Inferno Tower. So yeah. the range of this Inferno Tower is something like this, I would say. Maybe a little bit larger. It should be something like it. So what's happening, you're funneling your bowlers in. They get targeted on the wall by the Inferno Tower already, so they get chipped down. And you're forced to use a jump here because they won't target the Inferno. Yeah. And what's going to happen is they're already lower on HP. And then they jump in. Well, say goodbye to your bowlers. Yeah. The only way to stop this is to have a freeze on that inferno and have healers on your bowlers that is, um, I mean, under rage preferably because they need to be max HP for them to just survive it. So that's the reason for having them on that side of the base and a second reason for your sweeper to be covering the inferno tower. As you can imagine. Yeah. Because the sweeper will stop the healers on the bowlers and make it tougher for them to be full HP. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the other reason for having skeleton traps near your infernos. They are actually very important versus both miners will get to them later. And bowlers, they will be distracted while trying to attack the inferno tower. One thing I liked as well, just it, a lot of times, a lot of times it's, it's protecting not the, necessarily the individual Inferno Tower, it's protecting your base from a uh, kill squad to get to reach both, or yeah, know, it's protecting that second Inferno Tower from, yeah, from that definitely. Angle. I mean, uh, most of the strats, uh, as you said correctly, use a Queen Charge or a small kill squad to get to one of the Infernos, and the goal is to make the second one as hard as possible to, to reach and in this case, I've done it by placing two compartments in between. I mean, you cannot jump over with uh, with a jump or a quake. And uh, yeah, a I mean, of, a lot of crap with, in there that's going to yeah, just hold with up. Two jumps you're getting here, so you're still not at the back end Inferno Tower, so you're still in trouble. So um, and you see a lot of clans have this. I, I call it double alleyway. It's a double alleyway between the Infernos. Um, and it works very well against bowlers. So versus bowlers, this is one of the concepts you can use to your advantage uh, to make sure they never reach the second Inferno Tower. Yep. Yeah, that's great. So anything else you want to know about um, bow bowlers? What relevance... I was, I, we were talk, sort of talking about this earlier. Um, a big difference from Town Hall 9 to Town Hall 10 base building, I, I noticed right away, was and and I was actually had a sort of had a misconception about um, about this at first. I th I assumed sort of symmetrical bases at Town Hall Ten were like an anti two, but now I see more and more and more they're they're not anti two bases. They're they're symmetrical um, anti threes, and definitely you would never build a symmetrical anti three at Town Hall Nine. What is the relevance of that? Well, once again, what's the most important thing at Town Hall Ten? Your Inferno Towers? Your Inferno Towers. You've got two Inferno Towers. So, in, in essence, what you're doing is you're creating a zone around each Inferno Tower. And um, because the, this zone is the most important thing in your base, um, well, the, yeah, you can make them different. I mean, there's no issue to making them differently. It's just that it's easier to see uh, what's going to happen, how to defend it. 
Yeah. And if you have a, if, if you have a strong setup to defend one Inferno Tower, why not use it on the other side? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this is a, a must, but I'm saying that you've got two things to defend, and that kind of lead, leans, leads itself, um, to lends itself bases, for building symmetrical bases, yeah. You like build in too many bases around your around your inferno towers. Yeah, <laughs> basically. that's basically yeah. what you're doing. And uh, on the other hand, I mean, you only got one queen. You've got one CC. You got one king and three expos. So you're never able to make it exactly symmetrical. And that's why uh, you will always choose to, for one entry instead of the other. And you can use this to your advantage. I mean, there's no reason to build them symmetrically. It's just an easy way um, mm -hmm. to do. So. Uh, th there's another big piece too that is different from Town Hall Nine to Town Hall Ten is your queen and your quote unquote queen chamber. You don't even really need necessarily a queen chamber or like a hero chamber. No, and this is because she will go down. Yeah. <laughs> she will just go down. Uh, I mean, you've got mass miners, you've got mass bowlers, you've got dragons, and all of which are actually really strong when it comes to taking down a queen. So it's not a big deal if you leave her up halfway. I mean, sure, your troops will get lured to her, but that's, at the same time, the idea behind um, having her in the core, or at least somewhat in the core. Because if you're charging uh, from, let's say, 8 o'clock, the defending queen will engage around the time the Inferno Tower is engaged. Yeah. Or at least the defend attacking queen wants to attack the defending Inferno it's a Tower. Time, it's totally a time thing, pretty much. It's a time thing, and it's also yeah. a distraction thing. I mean, this queen's range, um, I don't know I don't know exactly where it is, but imagine it being somewhat like this. It should be a little bit larger again. Uh, but, but you can see what she's going to do. She's going to lure troops away from the Inferno Towers. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're using to your advantage. Same yeah. goes with the CC. Uh, the CC is very deadly to um, bowlers, miners, anything. So different uh, compared to Town 9. At Town 10, your CC is actually still very important. Very centralized. Because, um, for example, a baby dragon that survives will completely ruin your raid, whatever yeah. it is. So your CC is actually very important and make sure it's centralized well enough that it's defended from all angles and you can't lure it. Yeah. And actually, I guess if we, if we want to lead into the talk about miners and minor defense, my opinion, if talking about distractions too, is the king is like the best thing for miners around a, a, your bet. Like if you have your king, if your miners engage the king and there's not enough of them right near an inferno tower, they seem to die like just instantly. Yeah. They get us hold up on heroes quite long. And I don't know why exactly, but they they just seem to like heroes and never get away from them. Yeah. Which, so, yeah, I agree. Which, um, you know, you pair up a skeleton trap near a king. And if, if miners lock onto that, they're going to be standing there for ages before they go back underground. So, something yeah. to think about. And when you're using miners, uh, the main spell you will be using is uh, heals. And so... The goal when defending miners is to stop those heals from being effective. And miners somehow have a, a lot of trouble when it comes to skeleton traps, once again, and uh, the heroes. So when attacking a base and you know there are skeleton traps around the infernos, uh, better beware because um, they will mess up your miners. Yeah, absolutely. It will just stay above the ground, um, take a very long time to take a swing at just one skeleton trap, and they will all try to kill that same skeleton uh, out of the three. So it, it takes them a very long time to, to attack them, to kill them, and all the while the Inferno will be attacking them, the Expos will be attacking them, and hopefully a giant bomb pops as well. And if a BK can do the same thing, that's then he has fulfilled his purpose. Uh, another thing when defining m miners, um, as I said, the same giant bombs uh, placements. This is tunnel 10 versus tunnel 10, and keep that in mind. Uh, for tunnel 11 defending, giant bombs are a different story. That's, for, that, that's a later topic. Um, miners usually, um, let me try and draw this out. Uh, if you were to queen charge this from the angle we talked about, and let's say it's successful. The queen has come in, has charged in, and she's essentially taken out this section of the base. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, generally, when deploying your miners, 
for example, you would deploy them from this angle in an Asian wall, and they will go through the base. From almost every angle, you can send them in net. That's actually viable. Uh, most of the time, you will still be coming from the offside towards the Inferno Tower. Yeah. So, because you got to think, this is the reason why you want to have giant bombs. This is uh, a very next dumbed down base as well. You got to picture all of the trash you're going to have out here, luring your miners yeah. until they round the bend into that Inferno Tower compartment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And there, it's possible. It's very hard to do, but it is possible to, for example, lure your miners like this, and they will pass over this giant bomb. That's why it's there. And this Inferno Tower will actually target it uh, while passing over the giant bomb. That's just an idea. Another idea is like uh, what I talked about, like this angle. But keep in mind, there will always be a building in between here. So it's not a fair statement to just say it like this, but you get the picture. Try to divert them around your Inferno Towers and have them clip bombs while being under the Inferno Tower. Yeah, and especially stuck up on storages. I mean, yeah, definitely. Or a clan castle, even better. You know, miners coming in from that angle you just said going to go right to that clan castle after hitting a bomb. They're dead very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And the last thing that is not in this picture, but is very important when defending miners, that's the wizard towers. Yeah. They're ex extremely strong against uh, miners. And if you can place them around storages, in between storages, or maybe even around inferno towers, it, it just depends on where they fit well. Um, they're actually one of your strongest tools when it comes to defending miners. Because they're the attacker is usually forced to use a heal around uh, a wizard tower. So uh, if you can spread them out, force heals for miners, um, you actually have a good shot at defending miners. So what was the third attack? The Valves? third attack? Um, this is the attack that we actually do quite a bit. I, I've Valves. seen Red Mega use it a lot. With like is, one lava uh, hounds, dragons. Oh, or dragons, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, to cover it first um, because we like it. I know Reddit Omega is very proficient with them. Um, so when defending dragons, obviously your air defense are the main thing. If you have them exposed, like some people at Town 9 have nowadays, you will just see people queen walk. I mean, imagine the air defense being on top of the gold sources. Someone will just queen walk past this side from 9 to 12. Zap Quake, the other two, or even send a BK in with wall breakers, and that's three out of four air defenses gone. There's, well, there's a million choices <laughs> you could have. There's a million choices that way. <laughs> yeah. And I've even seen uh, this done. I've actually tried this myself a few times, is to have suicide heroes into the uh, air defenses and uh, then still dragoning the remainder of the base. Yep. Which is kind of crazy that they can pull it off. But you it's, end up with like 12 dragons or something. And with, yeah. a with a double zap quake, there's only one air defense to worry about. You can even go as far as taking a lava hound in the CC. That's one of the most uh, yeah. common ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So the lava hound will tank the point defenses and uh, soak up in black mines, which makes your dragons live and just smack the base. So... Once again, it's very important, way more important than Tunnel 9, to have your defenses inside of your base and actually protect them uh, against, for example, Queen walks. Uh, queen charges not as much, but uh, from suicide uh, heroes, for example, stuff like that. So keep that in mind when placing your air defenses. They still need to be very well protected. Um, another thing against dragons, and, and this is, in my opinion, a must. Uh, not everyone does it. But at least have one expo pointing up. Yeah. Always. I mean, uh, the two grounded expos are to, to counter. Um, well, I mean, most Tunnel 10 attacks nowadays are ground attacks. So it makes sense to have two on ground. But the one aired um, should be near the core. So the dragons take as long as possible to reach that expo from any angle. Uh, to make sure that they uh, the expo actually helps defending dragons. I'm actually rolling with two up and only one down right now. Yeah, for example, I mean, uh, I think, in my opinion, having one up is uh, what you need to have. Having two up is a uh, possibility. Yeah, like one's the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, you can't... It, I, I see PJ do this all the time. If he sees a base with three grounded expos, he's he will try and dragon you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
And I think that's a, a good strategy, honestly. Mm -hmm. So anything else for Defending Dragons? Not really. Um, Something maybe we might want to sort of touch on right now that we're speaking of Air Attacks and Town Hall 10 and a certain update that is about to hit the, hit the streets. <laughs> yeah, with um, the healings. I can imagine, and I've been talking about this. And I'm sure you've seen some of my banter about it. I, I, I kind of like it. We, you, and me, have both have agreed before that healers need something. I don't necessarily think that was the best way to do it, but now what we're going to see is a lot of black mines on the on the outside. The base. Yeah. So with this attack, we're specifically discuss, uh, discussing that that's going to make it that much more viable. I think. Yeah, on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, no. Because outside black mines uh, versus dragons, spread black mines is actually um, very bad for dragons. Yeah. I mean, for example, uh, having a black mine here and over here. I mean, the, it's still spread out. It still somewhat covers the entry for the queen. Um, that could actually be a viable way of um, attacking it. Let me actually change the picture because I have the one with a couple of traps up as well. If the program will actually help me do this. Do it. There it is. Let me load it up. Tell me when you can see it. Uh, I filled this base, the okay. same base in a bit more. So uh, I first wanted to show the bear. Just the bones. Uh, yeah, exactly. So in this base, for example, and this is before knowing about this update, uh, you can see I've split up the black mines already to defend against dragons. And if they're even more split up, that means there's even less chance now of them um, hitting one dragon at the same time. So they will actually hit two different dragons. So you can get five dragon kills with just black mines, which yeah. is actually awesome. So that's one of the best ways to defend dragons. Um, on top of that, uh, Teslas, for example, have them in between high HP buildings to make sure that they, I mean, they live for as long as possible. They have one of the best damage outputs versus air uh, units. So utilize them well. That's the last thing I wanted to say. Just, I mean, it's the same as Tunnel 9, really. I mean, at Tunnel 9, Teslas are one of the better ways to defend dragons. Um, and Wizard Towers do a number on balloons, and just as Teslas do. Um, so it's a bit of the same concepts. Uh, at the same time, you use them a bit differently. Yeah. I I just like the fact now, like, I don't think it made such a huge impact, the fact that they can target healers now. Um, you just need to plan around it now. Right? Like, yeah. you need to make note. The only thing you really thought about concerning Black uh, black Mines before was, well, they're probably going to be right near an air defense, and if they are, well, how do you just go around that? Well, now you kind of got to be a little more creative with it. If there is one on the outside and you want to charge or walk in a certain area, you just have to bring a loon down and trigger it ahead of time. Yep. It's, it's definitely, quite, which quite is just interesting. It's uh, it's going to be really cool to see how how people will adjust to this. So one. too, I mean, I mean that that just might be uh, it might be viable to have two black mice like this on the outside to prevent a queen charge. It might yep. just kill a queen charge straight up. You never and know. It, it's first, it's first hit defense, and I don't know if ten all ten versus ten necessarily needed anything to help first hit defense, but um, no. But at turn nine, uh, healers are just toxic. Absolutely, uh, they just make too many uh, stress viable that should not be viable. I mean, uh, for example, the HCHB. So I think the change will help. I it's, still don't agree with the honestly, change, but I think it's it's going to be a big help. We were talking about this in leadership chat earlier. It's <laughs> Town Hall 10 just needs access to some Town Hall 11 upgrades. I don't understand why a Town Hall 10 cannot have a level 3 miner or a level even... A well, level miners are very strong at Town Hall uh, 10 at the moment. They're the strongest attack. So I think uh, they do need to nerf them, but it would make the bullies... Um, less viable or easier to defend, and I think that would be fair. Or you know what I'm getting at, though. Yeah, it's, exactly. It, Town Hall 10 needs a little something, something. Um, but at the, at the same time, the healers being nerfed, I think, is makes a big impact on Town Hall 9, primarily because there's little tricks that you can do now to get that first hit defend, and there's so many fresh hit Town Hall 9s because the bowlers in the CC right now, well, I I wish they'd just done something to bowlers. That would have been easier. <laughs> well, bowlers can be defended. I mean, you can see it in this base. I think uh, this base, for example, is uh, 
strong against bowlers. Yeah, no, I I meant more at Town Hall nine. Just the yeah, in the definitely. CC, in Town Hall nine, you can't do anything about against bowlers, honestly. Yeah. You still can't. No. Anyway, back to uh, the top <laughs> uh, subject. I yeah. think uh, uh, the Velk Laloon is the last thing we need to cover. Mm hmm. Uh, for the basics, that is. Um, a Velk Laloon, what it does, it, is it wants to take out two air defenses and a, an Inferno, the Queen and the CC. So if you, there's a way, um, preferably with this one jump and a Rage, maybe a little bit more, uh, to take out all of those, then you're in trouble. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can see that the, the air defenses are nicely tucked in. So one jump, I mean, it's tricky. I don't know. Might, but that's a long shot. I don't know if you that's a long it. shot. So yeah. it, it, this is a tough base for it. But um, what it, what it tries to do usually find an entry, make a jump over to an inferno tower, and find a way to take out a second air defense with the same kill squad. Uh, on this particular base, it's it's kind of tough to do. But on the other hand, if you can get all of those, um, the air attack. In comparison, is fairly simple. So that's the beauty of it. I mean, uh, it's it's hard to get the kill squad going, and uh, that takes a lot of practice. Um, but once you do, then the air part usually becomes easy. So what you want to do against uh, Valalo uh, is once again protect the Inferno Tower well, and uh, keep your air defenses uh, separated. Um, I understand that this is difficult. I mean, it needs balance with uh, defending the queen charges and uh, the dragon attacks. Um, but I think it can be done. I mean, this is a, an example of how it can be done. Um, yeah, in essence, keep them far apart. Make sure it's uh, tough to get to both with just one jump. And um, well, something something also you got to think about is in because it's very there like we talked about the very symmetrical base design it's very easy to judge lalo pathing yeah. um so you got to keep that in mind that you cannot just leave you know you can't let a kill squad take one of your two mini bases as we were kind of saying right you can't just have a kill squad run rampant and get two air defense and inferno <laughs> clan castle and some heroes out of the deal if that happens you're probably Way, way too susceptible um, at Town Hall time. True, but um, it's tough to get what you want, the, oh, the yeah. value you want, yeah. and you need, actually. So, uh, e I mean, e even if um, you get the air part, I mean, that's the disadvantage of this type of sweepers. Um, this is why, for example, you will usually see them point more like this instead of just straight up uh, towards the outside. That's to defend uh, the loon part. Um, as well as the queen charge. So, for example, the, this Laloon part, I mean, yeah, sure, your Love Hounds will be in range of the Inferno Tower for the longest time and de defend, I mean, protect your loons. Um, but you still have to deal with an Inferno Tower, so it's not easy to, to do. Uh, and because of the, the skill required to pull this off, I think um, this is the one of the least... Um, Common stretch you need to worry about at the moment, at least. I mean, I it's a strong attack. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the right hands, it's it's borderline. I, I know I wouldn't be. <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's for, yeah. No, but th that's my exactly my point. Yeah. Like, if you can defend the ground portion of that attack, I think you're safe. Yeah. So once again, the grounded expos. Uh, this is one of the reasons you want to have two grounded two expos of them in this space. Yeah. Yeah, in, the, in this type of space, yes, of course. Yeah. So, um, if you can defend, like, it's the same as Town Online. If you get uh, keep one air defense too many up, I mean, your kill squad doesn't get the value it's supposed to get, then good luck getting the triple. Yeah. 10 versus 10, a lot of times right now, it's maybe not as bad as it used to be, but it's like a little, little fragile, fragile little thing. And if the smallest of things goes wrong... <laughs> See you Oof. later. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, exactly. So, I are there any more questions you have about defending? Um, no. I mean, I, I think we covered most of the basics here. Uh, you kind of gave people an idea of where to start, um, things to watch out for. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I myself don't have any uh, other specific questions. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing what the difference is, though, in your eyes about um, 10 versus 10 and then 10 versus 11 defending. Because um, I match a lot of things are the same, but I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. We'll see you uh, next time. Nice cliffhanger here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. No, but uh, we've covered only we've only covered the basics here. I mean, we haven't talked too much about spring traps, for example, uh, trash buildings, placement of uh, point defenses. All that stuff is still important. We'll cover that later. Uh, just keep in mind for a short recap, uh, the most important things are your infernos, uh, followed by your CC, queen, and uh, expos. Uh, focus on defending queen charges and um, mostly the bowlers and miners. So make sure it's hard to get from one inferno to the other inferno. And if those things are in order, I think you've got a strong base. Absolutely. Good sum up. All right. Thanks for coming out, Cad. Always a You're welcome. And that'll uh, do it here for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help you bag that next tree start. Till then, we're out.